I trim this into the inch back, I might have to trim this panel a little bit. <laughs> Nothing major. It's close, but almost on the mounts. I gotta trim this plate back a little bit here. Cut this up this way. I had nothing to reference because I was all brought it up. So we're gonna have to trim this up like this here, get the clearance from the frame. Well, this is what, what holds the trunk floor to the frame, to the body. This mounts to the body. This goes, the body mount bolt goes to these, to the floor with the rubbers and everything. And that, that makes, you know, the car solid. That's, that's what we're doing here. Getting these in. So now I just clamp them up, weld them up, prime them up. And then once we get the chassis here, we're gonna put these on the car and make sure they're in exactly the right spot because this was the one someone put a trunk floor in. We got an approximate where it's supposed to be, but we want a chassis under it to make sure it's where it's supposed to be because we've learned lessons from previous works done by previous shops that they don't always put it in the right spot. But this here will be set up for each side. We'll weld them up nice. Then when the chassis gets here, we'll lift it up, drop, put it under the chassis, drop it in, and we'll know where we're at and you know, then we'll weld this into the floor clean up and finish up the floor work and we're that much closer you know? then it's time to take it off the chassis flip it over and really start cleaning the shit out of the bottom of it The first thing of bringing this frame in, it helps with the wheel tub. Obviously, you guys know Mr. Rich did a monster wheel tub on this car um, for a couple reasons. It was a, a kill two birds with one stone. Number one, it was rotted out to that point. It was rotted out beyond the, where the original inner wheel wheel meets the trunk pan. It was rotted out an inch. So we basically just cut everything back, cut all the rot out and filled it in with new, wider, prettier tubs. But when you do that, it comes into uh, the, the, the frame well, so it will touch. So we have to cut this to open it up to meet, to accommodate the size of the wheel wheels, number one. Number two, we got all the, well, number one, we got all the rust out. Number two, we made it functional. Number three, now we're dealing with offsets. This is a spare rim. This is big for you guys out there that's building these cars. This is a standard 26 inch rear wheel, which is a five inch lip in the front, five inch lip in the back. Just to give you some views of this, um, the, the, the more sportier look that you're looking for is the deeper dish. So you still can have a 26 by 10 with a seven inch lip on the front, three inch lip in the back. You know, but in order to do that, you have to bring this rear end in two inches because if you don't, the seven inch lip will stick out and hit your quarter. You don't have two inches here, it will hit your quarter here. So that's why you gotta cut the rear end two inches. What we did, what I like right here is we probably got three inches in between these two, which gives us the two inches that we wanna do to cut, still narrow the rear end and keep the five inch lip with a seven inch lip. 
Now we got a 26 by 12. Now we got a 12 inch wide tire, which is gonna help putting that power to the ground. The more rubber you got to the ground, the more pet power you're gonna put to the pavement. So I hope I made it make sense. I hope it didn't sound too confusing for you guys out there. VTS Viado, me and Mr. Rich doing this thing. Big thing early in the morning. I got my coffee in the morning. I got my keys, got the measuring tape. We're doing it big and I'm hyped. We had to put this on real quick to know where we at. And if you look, that's three inches. Two and a half in some areas, but you got you got the two inches to go in. Uh, if we decide to shorten the rear end, we have the two inches. Switch your gears on you guys. This is more quarter panel stuff. But if you see right here, a guy called me one day in Atlanta and he was saying, you know, man, I got my quarters done. And when they put my bumpers on, it don't line up right. Because they didn't do this. Because they didn't do the quarters and then take the time out and go get the bumper and check the work for the bumper. I remember Red told me this long time ago. Any piece of a car that meets another panel, it gotta be fitted before paint. Skirts, doors, anything trim that meets another piece of a panel that's metal work, like this quarter was metal work and this is a trim piece that meets it. It has to be bolted up to double check because we done said it a hundred times, when you weld metal, that that metal get heated up and, and, and it can distort, you know, it can move and, and you know, you might be talking about a quarter inch, but you don't notice it until you put the car back together and then it look kind of ununiform, you know, so. But if you swing on this side and just see the contours of, you know, from here, down, and then here. You know, you still see the shape, and all of this is pre-body work, so all of this is actually gonna get better. But if we come up a little higher where they can see, same, you know, dimensions all the way with the same contour of the body. You see, that one's a little darker, so you really can't see the line. But if you follow the contour, it's all the same, you know, and that's what you're looking for. That's what you're looking for when you, you know, you wanna at least be close enough and when we do hand the car over to Red Ed, you know, he's not putting a ton of bundle on the car to make it right, so. Once you cut the frame to narrow it, that weakens it. So now we gotta strengthen the frame uh, to make it not only strong as it was, but even stronger than before. Well, we got some heavy duty, 11 gauge, pretty much an eighth of an inch thick. It's an inch by two inch. We plan to use two side by side like this throughout the perimeter of the inside. I think this is pretty neat. If, if, if you look at how he had to cut them, grind them, it's not just a simple cut to achieve this fitment what he have right there. He had to grind it, notch it. Once you come into a uh, diameter or circumference shape, this round part here, it's not just a uh, diagonal cut. You have to shape it to fit the contour to give you the gap room to be able to fit two of these. So I thought that was pretty free. It's a little time consuming, but at this point, like, I want to feel comfortable that the back of the frame is rock solid, you know. The fact that we thinned it, one, the fact of the type of power that we have in it, two, you know, like we want to make the car last longer than what's expected. So, like I say, man, the expectations here, man, we want to make sure we give you the product that you're demanding so my guys is going overboard in what they're doing to kind of achieve that. So, Mr. Lofton, we got you, man. This is going to be a work of art right here. You might as well just put this in a museum when we're done, you know? How about that? It's all 360 welded around all the joints. It's welded up nice and tight. It's just great to yeah, have welded in because I made it so it's removable. Then at the end, once we put it to this, then it's in for good. You know, once yeah. I put this in, but now I can take it out, fit the pieces. Hey, hey. All primed up, rails primed up, caps are all welded solid inside and out. And now we're doing the final squeeze to stop welding. If you 
look into the uh, inside of the channel, you will see it pretty much just fills everything up um, solid. And he's gonna weld everything up, you know, pretty much together and extend it through the rockers and back through the back channel of the frame the where you actually have a great foundation. Uh, everything will be solid. Um, and then he did retain the factory cap, which was the outside piece. that has the same contour shape and everything and then we'll put it back together so it's going to be a lot stronger than it was from the factory we're still going to do some more strengthening once we get the body off of it but this was also to if you remember the wheel tubs this is to accommodate the the wider wheel tubs that also was done to mr lawton's car so if you come on this side not all the way fully welded but it's definitely tacked in you can see how the frame was massaged in to kind of give a little additional clearance up front and in the back. So, and then we still have a couple bars that's coming off too. So, but just the just the the, the direction that we're going into it as far as accommodating more strength in the back, especially in the area of the frame that we we narrowed about an inch and a half. You know, it's definitely coming along. So, this is what's up. You guys seen the fitment of the uh, suspension work front and rear. Uh, you also seen the build up to this point as far as the bodywork, metalwork. Now the frame is being narrowed and then everything, you know, once the body comes off of the frame, he can really fine tune a lot of the, the welding and everything that's got to be done. The last thing before we take it off, we're going to put a cage in. While it's all bolted to the car, we'll get a cage in and weld it up to where once we do, now we can flip it to the side and everything and it's still to keep his rigidity, it won't have any you know, chassis flex, you know, due to being at the car so long on that rotisserie. So we're definitely doing a good job strengthening it up. Stay tuned. We're going to have the Popeye the Sailor Man frame soon, man. Big boy strength coming, man. VTS V Auto. We got the frame built in it. We did everything while it was on curb brake, bolted to the chassis, so we know we got a good fit. It's not gonna twist when it go back together to be in the same position what it was in when we had the cage built on the body mount. But then in order to phase two, now that we got the body off of the chassis, we can um, you know strengthen it. Obviously, you see the pockets gone where the coilover original pockets were. Uh, we, but we, we're actually stiffening it up even more, giving it more strength, but we want to put our strengthening uh, stabilizer bar and incorporate it with the coilover mounts to where it still strengthens all of this, where it's not just just metal hanging over here. Before it had the core, core spring pocket as well as a brace that went down here. So this will kind of give us more, even more support, and then we'll incorporate it with the coilover mounts. Uh, what I wanted to do was make it fully functional. You know, anything that GM or any of these companies built, they made it where it could come out, not welded in, you could service it, anything happens. 
we can unbolt all the suspension and then you got a raw frame. You're gonna see it once he's done, you know, welding everything up because we gotta take all the suspension off, send it out, get it stripped to the metal, get all the surface rust off of it. Then it'll come back, we'll do our final weld up, which is boxing the frame in, strengthening it up, and then we'll hand this over to the body department. That's Red's department, so. Once we're done with the welding, we'll be able to get it up. You can see here the whole purpose of us notching the frame. We gave, we got, we gained clearance within here. This frame probably would have been, you know, out here without it, which we would have still had clearance for this size tire. But the wheel wheel that we made, the wheel wheel was brought back to this line to, to gain clearance. So if the frame would have been out here, the wheel wheel would have been hidden. So now we got clearance for the wider wheel wheel and we have ability to kind of, uh, you know, add a, a bigger tire if we wanted to. So we kind of got, and then, you know, Mr. Rich told me yesterday, like each side where we cut the frame has a total of eight feet of one by two quarter, I mean, eighth inch steel uh, reinforcement bars welded inside of all of this. So it's, it's definitely going to be super stout. It's going to be strong, kind of what we were shooting for here. You do know that Mr. Lofton is going to put an LT5 in here. That motor stocker to be 800 horsepower. So if he tries to do a pulley swap, which is what we're going to do on the one we put in the caddy, you know, at that point you can shoot the 900 to 1,000 if you go to, you know, E85 gas, a couple little tune-ups, I and mean, you probably can port the blower. So if you do things like that and you get to the thousand horsepower threshold, you want to make sure, you know, six, just keep in mind, 600 horsepower would have been something. You know, so when you get to a thousand, that, that type of torque when you, you know, that's going to put a lot of twist on your, your, on your suspension components, the frame, the body, everything. So you want to make sure you build it properly to where it's going to sustain and then, you know, a year later, you don't see the guy doors and everything have gaps. All of the lines that we line up is off because of the amount of torque that keep you. Every time you punch that gas, it's gonna twist. So we're building it to be able to sustain that and you know have its rigidity in years to come. So shout out, Mr. Rick, man.